Hey, welcome to our Bible study here at Influence Church. We started a new series entitled Understanding the Holy Spirit. Today we are jumping into part two. We're looking at the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And then our next session, we look at the Holy Spirit in the New Testament and see what changed. In our first study, we covered the different names found in the Bible from Old to New for the Holy Spirit. And we gained a general knowledge, a general understanding of the Holy Spirit. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be going more in depth leading up to Pentecost Sunday that is just a few weeks away. In case you didn't know, Pentecost Sunday is 50 days exact after the day of resurrection, which is after Easter Sunday. Jesus was upon the earth for 40 days after his resurrection and then he ascended into heaven and then 10 days after his ascension, the Holy Spirit was poured out in the upper room among his disciples. So let's jump into today's study. If you have not done it as yet, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button. If you missed any of our previous content, go to our YouTube channel, click on the videos tab and you'll be able to rewatch any of our previous studies. Let's grab your Bibles. You can follow along and something to take some notes. So understanding the Holy Spirit part two, we're looking at seven um, characteristics of the Holy Spirit that we see in the Old Testament, all right? So um, oftentimes people will say that the Holy Spirit and Jesus did not exist in the Old Testament, and these are new age teachings or um, things that were, were indoctrinated into mainstream Christianity to say that Jesus and the Holy Spirit existed, but God was only God the Father. However, I'm gonna show you today um, and we did speak on the Trinity in the last um, session, ask, answer any question, who is the Holy Spirit? So today you're going to see that the Holy Spirit can be seen throughout the Old Testament. And there are seven major ways that the Holy Spirit is seen in the Old Testament. So we're starting with number one. And obviously, number one is the Holy Spirit is seen in creation. So from the beginning of the, of the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, we see that it says the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now remember in our last study, we said that the spirit of God is another name used in the Bible to refer to the Holy Spirit. So here we see that in the beginning when, when God was going through that creation process of creating the entire world, that his spirit, the Holy Spirit was present, right? And we see that in John, John says that um, the words that God spoke, the word was actually Jesus Christ himself. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit present in creation. This is what makes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit equal in power and authority, being one, being one God, right? But three persons, because they all were part of the creation process together. And for some thing or some entity to be God, it must have that creative power to be able to form out of nothing something into reality. This is what we see here happening, right? It says the earth was what? Without form. That means this was before there was the trees, before there was the animals, before there was the sky and the water and all the seven days of creation. It was just void. It was, it was just nothing there. But in that process, now the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters and then creation began as God um, spoke it into existence right then job chapter 26 and verse 13 says by his spirit he adorned the heaven right so by his spirit he adorned the heaven so this this is another verse in scripture that tells us that the holy spirit his spirit was actually part of that creation process um, not just part in terms of okay he created the heavens only but he he was in equal power and authority with god the father god the son and god the holy spirit all working together in creation and this this verse is from job where job questions god in terms of his his deity in terms of who he is because job is in a tough place he has been stripped of everything that he has and job is questioning god and job has revelation from god to see that all that god had done from the beginning of creation when it comes to creation of the world World. Even in the book of Job, there is mention to some animals that are described that most scholars would say, based on these descriptions, these are dinosaurs that are described in the book of Job, stating that God created all these animals. All right. So here it says that even in the book of Job, we see that the Holy Spirit was present in creation. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground, and what he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and became a living being. So from creation, right, not only were all the things, all the trees and the, the uh, mountains and the sea and, the, and all the animals created by 
the Holy Spirit. But as well, we see here that God breathed the Holy Spirit into man and then we received life in our lifeless body. So God formed man, formed the physical shell of man and then breathed his Holy Spirit. So people would say the, a good understanding of this verse is that God's Spirit is what gives every single human being life, right? The Holy Spirit is what gives us life. That is our essence and our life force. So, um, that is what gives us life upon the face of the earth. So, now, to go a little bit deeper theology, theologically, we understand that the human body is made out of three parts. The physical body, the soul, and the spirit. The physical body, when we die, that goes back to the ground. The dust, from the dust we were created, from the dust we will return. The spirit returns to God because that is God's spirit that is giving us this life upon the face of the earth. The spirit that he breathed into man in creation. The soul now is that that's who we are. That's our personality, our emotions, our thoughts, right? That now is what faces judgment in terms of eternity, right? Heaven or hell. So we see here, number one, that the Holy Spirit was present in creation. Number two, we see that in the Old Testament that the Holy Spirit lives with mankind. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now this speaks about the great flood where God sees the evil upon the earth and he says, I can't continue to have my spirit um, on the face of the earth with man striving with them. They are, they are filled with evil, their heart is corrupt. And he puts a deadline date on when he's going to wipe out um, all of creation, but then we know that he sees Noah and he selects Noah to be the savior, so to speak, of that time, right? So here we see that even in the Old Testament, because we speak about it in the New Testament, that the Holy Spirit lives with us. He was poured out upon, a, upon all flesh on the day of Pentecost. But in the Old Testament as well, the Holy Spirit lived with man. Now, it's a little bit different from the New Testament, and we are going to cover that in a later study. But the Holy Spirit lived with mankind in the Old Testament. We see in Judges chapter 3 and verse 10, that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel. He went out to war and the Lord delivered Keshon Rishathayim, Thayim, king of the Mesotop Mesopotamia, in, king of Mesopotamia into his hand. And his hand prevailed over Kushan, and we had to struggle with this word again, Rishathayim. Right, so here it tells us that the Holy Spirit rested upon this judge and enabled the judge and Israel to win a battle. So the Holy Spirit lived with mankind and he also rested upon selected persons in the Old Testament, such as kings, judges, warriors, selected persons. Not all flesh, not all of, man, all of mankind he rested upon, but selected persons he rested upon and he empowered them. Um, and we're going to see some more on that in this study itself, right? So... Another example is Judges chapter 6 and verse 34, which says, By the Spirit of the Lord, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and then he blew the trumpet, and, Abbe, and the Abbey's rites gathered behind him. So again, we see that the Holy Spirit not only lived with mankind, uh, in that part of living with mankind, he also came upon certain men specifically in the Old Testament. Judges chapter 14 and verse 6, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, speaking about Samson, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand, but he did not let his father or his mother um, know what he had done, right? So again, we see the Holy Spirit living with mankind in the Old Testament. It's different from the New, but we do see the old, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit living with mankind, resting upon mankind. Number three is God spoke his word through the Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit spoke God's word. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 2, it says, The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me, and he set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. So what would happen is the prophets and, and the kings, they would receive God's word directly from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would speak through them. Um, even not only words in terms of instructions, but prophecy as well. So the Holy Spirit would rest upon prophets and they would say, thus says the Lord, the Lord says this, that, etc. right? And it was not through their own knowledge or what they wanted to say, but it was through the Holy Spirit telling them exactly what God's word was for the people of that time, the Israelites, what the word of God was for their decision making, their law, um, what they needed to do, what was right, what was wrong. So the Holy Spirit actually spoke God's word through human beings in the Old Testament 
All right, so number three is um, the Holy Spirit spoke God's word. Number four is he empowered people. Yeah, that's right. So in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit empowered people. He in, in, um, endued them with supernatural abilities, right? So in Numbers chapter 11, verse 25, it says, And the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took off the spirit that was upon him. And he placed the same upon the seven elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. So here we see an empowerment of the Holy Spirit, a gift of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, which is prophecy, right? Judges chapter 14, verse 6, it says, And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one who would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his mother or father what he had done. This is again Samson. So Samson's strength came from the Holy Spirit. Now, this is very important because his, his strength didn't, it was not natural. It was not from him lifting weights and eating on a high protein diet or taking steroids. Samson's strength came directly from God. And there are many other examples in the Old Testament where prophets and kings would perform miracles or do things that were supernatural that was through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit empowered people, right? Now, we did say that he rested upon specific people. So it was specific people that he would have empowered according to um, God's will and God's, God's purpose and according to rules and functions and responsibilities, right? So the four that we see so far, we're almost halfway through, seven in total. We see number one is the Holy Spirit was there in creation. Number two, the Holy Spirit lives with mankind. Number three is he spoke God's word. And number four is he empowered people. Now, all of this is in the Old Testament. We're continuing just three more left in our study for today. All right. So number five is he taught people. Yeah, that's correct. The Holy Spirit taught people in the Old Testament. So Nehemiah chapter nine and verse 20 says, you gave your good spirit to instruct them. Nehemiah chapter nine and verse 30 says, for many years, you were patient with them. By your spirit, you warned them through your prophets, yet they paid no attention, so you gave them into the hands of the neighboring people. So when we speak about the Holy Spirit empowering people as well as the Holy Spirit um, speaking God's word through people, in that process of empowering and speaking through the prophets, he was teaching the people what they should do that was pleasing unto God. So this is where we have all of the law and we have even instructions that were given to the nation of Israel specifically on what they should be doing on all the ceremonial rites. So the Holy Spirit was teaching them all the things that they needed to know and that they needed to do, right? We see again another example in First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 12 that he gave him the plans of all that the Spirit had put in his mind for the courts of the temple of the Lord and all the surrounding rooms for the treasuries of the temple of God and for the treasuries of the dedicated things. Now, this is where David gives his son Solomon all the instructions of how to build a temple. There. And it says here clearly that the Spirit of God is the one that gave David all the instructions on how to build a temple. David did not build a temple, but instead he passed on that instructions to Solomon. And Solomon is the one who built the temple, the first temple to exist in Jerusalem, right? So the Holy Spirit gave, it says here, he gave him the plans of that that the Spirit had put on his mind. The Holy Spirit taught David everything in considering to how to build the actual temple of God. Job chapter 32 and verse 8 says, but it is the Spirit in a person, the breath of Almighty, that gives them understanding, right? So even, even, even for those who did not receive any supernatural gifting, it's saying here that it's, it's even in those cases that it is the Spirit of God, His bread that is inside of us, that helps us to just have understanding on the whole, right? That Holy Spirit that we saw, that bread that was breathed into mankind, that we all have from birth, that life force inside of us, gives us understanding, right? So He taught the people. Number six is He selected people, or He chose people, He called people for specific purpose and plans, right? 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 12 to 13, this speaks about the anointing of David to become king of Israel. And it says, so he sent and he had him brought in. This is David. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and a handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil, the oil, the oil representing the Holy Spirit, and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, what? The Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. So the Spirit selected people in terms of leadership rules, in terms of kings and prophets, in terms of priestly duties. The Holy Spirit would use prophets as well to instruct them to select and anoint people. Here we see that 
David is anointed to be king. And the oil that is used in the Old Testament is meant to be a representation of the Holy Spirit. As he's anointed with this oil, it says that the Holy Spirit rests upon him from that day on in power, right? So the Holy Spirit chose people for specific rules and functions and duties also. Or you could say he called them or he placed purpose over their life for specific um, rules in history, right? So number six is he selected people. Number seven, last one, and this one is a big one, right? Number seven is... The Holy Spirit pointed to Jesus. All of the Old Testament prophecies that were given by the Holy Spirit were meant to point to Jesus. So we spoke about the fact that we can see the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, but throughout the Old Testament as well, we can see Jesus because the Holy Spirit is actually giving prophecy to, the, to all the Old Testament prophets on Jesus who is to come. So he's preparing their hearts on the messiah coming what the messiah will do he's also preparing their hearts through the law because the law was meant to prepare us for jesus who would be the fulfillment of the law so all through the old testament the holy spirit is actually pointing to jesus even though you would not see the name jesus written there he's pointing to the messiah the soon coming king he's pointing to jesus christ right the deliverer the redeemer some scripture verses to help us see this is isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 5 and it says there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, what they're speaking about here in this prophecy is they're speaking about a seed. They're speaking about a descendant out of the lineage of Jesse that will now be the Messiah, right? And we know that Jesus was from that lineage of Jesse, that kingship of David, right? Jesse being the, um, the pre-descendants. I don't know if that's correct, any predescendants. Anyhow, but David being a descendant of Jesse, right, of that bloodline, and then Jesus being a descendant from that entire bloodline. He be that's where they're speaking about the stem out of Jesse. So they're speaking about this um this person to be born out of that bloodline, that the Spirit of God will rest upon him, and that would be the Messiah, right? So again, the Holy Spirit here, through prophecy, is pointing to Jesus. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, that, might see from, seem, that verse might seem very familiar because in Luke chapter 4, this is the verse that Jesus quotes when he begins his ministry. Right after coming out of the wilderness, he quotes this verse from Isaiah because he is actually fulfilling that prophecy. He is the one that the Spirit of God is going to rest upon. He is the anointed one. He is the one that's going to preach to the poor and to set to heal the sick, the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to open those that are prisoned, to be set free, all right? So here we see the Holy Spirit is pointing to Jesus Christ, right? He's pointing through prophecy throughout the Old Testament that there is a Jesus to come, which, which, is, which is surprising because even up until now, Jews don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, even though all the biblical prophecies align to Jesus being the Messiah that was given in the Old Testament by the Holy Spirit, right? And then the fulfillment of those prophecies by Jesus while he was alive, and even till this day when it comes to his followers, are fulfillment of all that the Holy Spirit was saying about Jesus and what he would do one day, which has already come. So the seven points for today's session when we talk about Jesus, um, the Holy Spirit, well, we talk about Jesus too, but the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament is the Holy Spirit was there in creation. He lives with mankind. He spoke God's word. He empowered people. He taught people. He selected people and he pointed to Jesus. If you miss any of those points, you can simply just rewind this video and uh, rewatch different parts. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section. I would be happy to respond to your questions, even your criticisms. Um, if there was something that I missed out that you would like covered in this study, you can mention it. Uh, today we covered the Old Testament survey of the Holy Spirit. In the next study, we are going to be looking at the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. You would see some similarities. You would see some differences as well. And you don't want to miss that, all right? So this brings us to the end of today's study. And until we see you again, God bless you.